Hey everyone, this is Morty Croson with the Performance Lab of California. We're going to do another breakdown here today on Marvin Bracey. He is uh, a up-and-coming U.S. track runner. He um, running the 100 meters here. Is a, he was also a wide receiver for, uh, he played a little bit for the Panthers, a little bit for the Colts. He's here in, in, in this orange uh, suit here. And we'll just get right, right into the breakdown. So, one of the big things that, that stands out about Marvin Bracey is he has a lot of right hip flexor strength, and really just hip flexor strength in general. Left one you can see, I mean, he, he does a good job with the start, again, of just of getting that foot down, so it seems like really a good option for guys that are working on the start. Make sure you're, you're really trying to, to, to extend, and you don't want to necessarily, you know, limit your, your step there with that initial step, but you don't want to over... Um, overextend on that initial step as that seems to um, negatively impact your ability to start. So he gets that right foot down, gets a good amount of extension. Left foot he doesn't have as, or left hip he doesn't have as much range of motion. You can kind of see how he goes off to the side a little bit there. Doesn't do as, as good of a job of kind of um, getting into abduction in the hip. Uh, but then on the right side, again, you can see he does. he's really clean and getting that hip flexion there. And you can see how he turns out and gets some, some abduction going to really get a good push off. Left one now he's able to, as he pushes off and get some, some lateral tilt in his pelvis. Notice how his pelvis is really high up here and then watch him laterally shift. Excellent job there. Really moving all of his pelvis weight over to the left. Um, and now he was a able to get a little bit more hip range of motion on, on that side. But you know that as you go through and as he starts catching his speed, you can really see how that right hip flexor is really, really strong. And, and again, it's just those hip flexors in general. I mean, he's, he's pretty hunched over still here. I mean, compared to some of these, these other guys, but you know, like, look, let's look compared to him. Uh, I would say Marvin Bracey is not as hunched over as him, but we can see how much hip flexion Marvin's getting into compared to the guy next to him. So that's really, really rare to be able to have that much range of motion. I mean, even, you know, the guy that ends up being pretty close to him, you know, he he, and he has pretty good um, hip flexor range of motion here when he's coming up. But still, I mean, Marvin's able to get it all the way up to about 90 degrees. I mean, that's really, really good while he's still in a bent over position there. So um, I would say that's definitely one of his, his good traits about him. Um, as he gets going, it, it seems like you can see that left arm, how it, it, it kind of goes off to the side there so you maybe try to clean that up a little bit see how it's going kind of right sideways there um and that makes it so you know that that's probably a limitation with the the left hip flexor he's kind of spun open here doesn't have as good of um, hip stabilization with that that right hip touching the ground and the left hip coming into hip flexion um so there could be some some core some anti rotation type stuff that that you can work on there and, and anti rotation if if there's any you know track athletes you're trying to get faster and you're not doing anti rotation stuff where you're you're trying to resist movement within that lower core I think I think that's definitely something that you'd want to add into your your sprinting um, just because it helps you really stabilize that pelvis a lot of these guys that are able to run uh, well all the guys that are able to run sub 1000 meters they all have elite. Um, pelvis stabilization, whether they train it or they didn't train it. Some of some people, you know, they, they're really training it without specifically training it just because of how well they're able to um, stabilize in their pelvis kind of, I guess, naturally. So, um, yeah, definitely got to work on that. You don't want to end up, um, you know, with that arm swinging out and, and making it so uh, your, your hips are facing one way and your trunk's facing another way the, the best you can. I mean, um, Marvin's still a really fast guy. Um, and, and still has, you know, a really good hip stabilization. There's just a little bit of a time period there in that transition where he, he's a, he kind of lost a little bit and, and um, really he ends up regaining it a lot better. Uh, but you can tell that he's definitely much more comfortable rotating to his, his right side and getting that, that right hip flexor up and through. Okay. But then as that happens, when, what ends up happening is that that throws off how that left arm comes back um, and, and rotates. So... You know, what, what he'd want to do in order to get a little bit more symmetry is make it so uh, he's able to really open up a little bit more to the left side and work on being able to get a little bit more T-spine rotation there. Because as he comes through with that left arm going back, right arm coming forward, he just goes back to normal. And then as he goes with his right leg through, he gets into a good amount of rotation to um, his right side. And now that he's getting going here and opening up, he's not turning as much, which is 
um, when he actually really opens up and starts to overtake the guy um, that's currently in the lead now. The reason why I say he has really good hip flexion is as he gets going as well, you can see how he really starts opening up and extending out and his feet are so far off the ground as he begins that knee extension. You know, one of the um, things that you've got to be able to do in order to be a, a, tra a top um, track athlete is be able to get that knee all the way up out in front of you and then be able to work on extension and keep a good heel to butt ratio as you're doing that. And, he, and he's able to do all of those things. He could probably actually strengthen up those hamstrings a little bit more and strengthen up that posterior chain. That's going to end up probably being a key um, dictator of how much you know more speed he ends up putting on. Also, the arm swing. I think he's, he's uh, missing a little bit of shoulder extension there. He could probably get a little bit further back. Um, especially on that, that left side, just because that arm kind of bows out to the side. So he's, he's definitely limited in that, le that left scapula, left extension. Um, right side, it, it's not as bad. He does get pretty close to full extension there, but you know that's definitely something for him to consider to work on as well as getting a little bit more range of motion um, in that left arm to make it so then, and, and really it's left arm to left T-spine. There's a big correlation between how well your T-spine moves and how well your shoulder moves. And so if he can get those a little bit more synced up, now he'll be able to open up that left hip a little bit better, um, which will obviously make it so he can increase in his overall uh, running time. So um, yeah, I would say posterior chain activation would be a big one also just because, you know, as he's coming through, if he could just hold that heel to butt a little bit longer, he'd really be able to extend out in front of him. I know he has the hip strength to be able to keep that knee up and, and extend out in front of him. He just needs to be able to um, develop that the hamstring strength to really keep that heel to butt a little bit longer um, as he's transitioning through, and, and that'll help him in, in really getting that elite pullback um, to get the, his weight back underneath him. But notice how he gets out and extends that knee and then pulls that, that, arm, that leg back underneath him. Um, and, and that's really a key movement right there, guys. I mean, if you're a track runner, you need to be able to get to this knee out in front, extend the leg, pull it back underneath you before the foot comes underneath. Too many guys, they get to this position and they just kind of push their leg down into the ground rather than getting that pull back. Okay, see that pull back that I'm talking about where he's, he's really trying to pull his, his hip, get into what would even be called hip extension, where, you know, hip flexion would be the leg coming forward, hip extension would be the leg going back. So he's really trying to pull into hip extension as he's touching the ground. That helps you get a vertical force if you're able to touch with the, the ball of your foot. And then also you think about really pushing off and getting your, uh, your heel right up to your butt. So, um, I mean, overall, you know, he's obviously, he's an elite um, track athlete. So he has really good running form. He, he, it's not like he is, is missing in a lot of areas, but there's some things like for everybody that we could all work on. You know, I was, I've been um, talking to some people about sprinting and, it, and you know, the fascinating thing is, is I, I wonder how fast the fastest human can, can sprint. You know, it's, it's just a, uh, you know, even Usain Bolt has some things that you can work on mechanic wise. I think everybody works on, um, has things they can work on. And I wonder if there's a way to see exactly how fast somebody could, could possibly sprint. Probably not. We'll probably just have to, you know, continue to get better, continue to chase perfection in terms of mechanics and, and uh, see, see where that takes us. So um, I'm, I'm excited for this next wave of science to, to hit the, the track and field um, market just because I know that that's going to make it so everything with, the uh, with speed and and all the times and and uh, you know the Olympic records are going to be altered because of all the the science that's now going into athletic performance and injury prevention. So I'm I'm excited to see you know what the the progression there is. Anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching these videos. Uh, we appreciate you giving the feedback and and watching and and listening and and um, just subscribing to what we do. If you have any questions, reach out to me, Maury at yourperformancelab.com. That's M-O-R-E-Y at yourperformancelab.com. We have a speed breakdown program. We, we're finishing up on that speed book, which should be out um, beginning of next week. And then also we have our, we're going to have a, a speed program that goes with that. And that'll all be detailed within the, uh, when, once the book comes out. So um, yeah, as always guys, thanks for watching the videos and we will see you soon.